Welcome to this Strategy Simplified discussion. We are so delighted to have here with us both Steph Paletta and Patricia Hong from Alvarez and Marsal's Consumer and Retail Group. Uh, Patricia, as we kick it off, would love a quick introduction. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. We are excited. This is actually my first live podcast, even though it's actually just a Zoom call. So maybe it's not as daunting as it sounds. Um, But I am a partner and managing director at CRG, which we'll talk a little bit later. But it's a group within Alvarez and Marcel, and it's a relatively new group. Um, I do the bulk of my work in strategy, so growth-related, big transformation. All of my clients sit in the consumer and retail. Um, I've been a consultant for most of my adult life, so basically the last 20-plus years. Um, I am originally from Brazil, so a shout-out to any Brazilians here. And I see someone with like a background from Itaú, which is a Brazilian bank, so I'm assuming we've got a Brazilian here. And um, I live in New York City, um, very close to Columbia Business School. Um, So if there's anyone from Columbia, you're very close to me right now. I'm literally staring at Riverside Drive right now. Um, Pleasure to be here. Love it. Thank you for Patricia. Steph, what about you? (laughs) Yeah. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, Nice to see everybody here today. Uh, Excited to join you guys. Um, I am the Director of Recruiting for the Consumer and Retail Group. I'm excited to have joined the team about a year and a half ago, and time has been flying by. Um, we've been very busy, and so um, you know, we basically are doing in the middle of campus recruiting. I lead our campus recruiting and lateral recruiting efforts, um, and excited to be a part of our people operations effort. Um, I've been recruiting for longer than I'd like to admit, <laughs> um, um, and uh, mostly have uh, been in financial services. So that's been my specialty for um, the bulk of my career. And, you know, excited to be here. Like I said, I sit here in Connecticut, so not uh, too far from New York City. Um, and uh, yeah, happy to be here today. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you both. We've been looking forward to this conversation. Uh, But before we dive in to the nuts and bolts of things, uh, we'd love to ask just a couple of quick fun questions off the top. We'd love to get to know a little bit more about you. Patricia, kick us off. What's your favorite New York food or restaurant? Okay, so um, you did guys submit that question ahead of time. So I did do some thinking, but it was actually an easy one. Um, So for me, it's definitely brunch. When I moved here 20 years ago, that was my favorite thing. Now brunch is also pretty popular back home in Brazil, but it wasn't back then. And so I'm a big brunch fan. And I, you know, every weekend it's brunch over and over. I love it. (laughs) Um, Oh, I love that. I'm a fan as well. (laughs) Hard to pick a favorite restaurant, especially if you live in New York City. Absolutely. Absolutely. Steph, what about you? Favorite New York food or restaurant? Yeah, that's also a tough one. Um, I am uh, originally from West Texas. So though I'd like to say, you know, maybe Dos Caminos because I love Mexican food. Um, honestly, the best food in New York City that I find is um, Italian food. So, um, you know, anywhere that has great Italian food, I don't uh, discriminate at all. And uh so uh, yeah, it's hard. It's a really hard, uh, hard question, um, but definitely Italian food. Love it. Yeah, the sky, the sky's the limit. You have infinite choices. I'm jealous. Um, let's go to back to Patricia. What's your favorite thing to do on the weekend? A hobby or an activity? Um, sleeping in. That's my favorite activity on the weekend, hands down. It's a superpower. It really is. It helps you recharge and get ready for the next week, I'm sure. I love it. Steph, what about you? Uh, Yeah, I'd love to say sleeping in. I have a two and a four-year-old, so unfortunately that is not in my wheelhouse. Um, But definitely anything outside, um, whether that's, you know, taking a hike or in the winter, definitely you'll find me skiing. Um, So just trying to be active outdoors mostly. Love it. So this year we've had that kind of extended summer, extended good temperatures. So nice to be outside. Uh, well, thanks for just you know, just a couple of quick questions off the top to get to know a little bit more about you. But let's really dive into the meat of things. Uh, you, you shared a little bit about your roles and a little bit about your background, but we'd love to hear now a little bit more about your journey. Steph, if you could kick us off, kind of why did you decide to join AM? 
Yeah, um, I was really excited um, when someone from a and reached out to me about the opportunity. Um, you know, the option to join a team that's growing. Um, you know, I got to meet some really great people. Um, the story was compelling. Um, and just the opportunity to help build something, right? That was really um, what drove me to a and But every single person I met in my process um, was fantastic. They were, you know, very kind, humble, you know, really interested to know, you know, about me. Um, you know, just a, a really great team that I met with. So it was, you know, a number of reasons, but I think just, you know, mostly, you know, the growth opportunity and the opportunity to build something great. Absolutely. That's a compelling value proposition for sure. Uh, Patricia, what about you? Well, I just want to start saying that I'm thankful every day that Stephanie did decide to join us. <laughs> it made my job a lot easier and we it, we're awesome partners. So I do want to acknowledge that. Um, but why did I join? So I joined about two years ago and I had a longstanding career at another consulting firm where I'd been since I graduated from, from college. So close to 20 years, it was my whole career. Mm -hmm. I joined, um, like the, the simplest answer is, I joined because I got the opportunity to work with close friends and mentors, doing something that I really love, which is consulting, mm -hmm. um, with the opportunity to evolve the model and create something um, slightly different and new. So that's like, that's the, the simplest, most honest answer I can give. Absolutely. And, and let's, let's double click on that a little bit. You came in as a part of a, a larger effort to evolve the model to explore new things. Uh, I think for many people, a and is known as a restructuring and a turnaround firm. Patricia, would that still be an accurate representation or is that now just a stereotype? Uh, and, and tell us more about that evolvement of the business model. So, I mean, that's definitely the the heart and soul and the DNA of, you know, a &M. It is definitely, you know, restructuring and, um, you know, that's what we're known for. Um, I think one of the questions that you're going to ask me later, but I'm just going to give you the answer now is, you know, how would you describe, you know, if there's a brand statement for a &M and you know, for me, that brand statement is, it's just a bold place right? There's a lot of, you know, it's bold. And I think because it's bold, um, it has grown in many other directions. Um, and it has taken, you know, huge steps. Um, and I think one of the biggest, you know, one of the big steps now is, you know, building this, you know, um, industry led, um, industry focused, you know, consulting um, business of which, you know, CRG, kind of the first, you know, kind of the first pilot to be stood up. Um, so, yes, I mean, yes, that's their DNA. But I also got to learn a lot more about a and as I was going through, you know, the process of thinking about joining. And it, it's a lot more for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that that bold expansion, as you termed it, right, that's happened over time, uh, a has made the decision to move into strategic advisory, move into transformation. And as you shared, the kind of pilot standing that up was the consumer and retail group. Can you expand on that a little bit, share about the journey of how the firm made that decision? I think, you know, it, it was a, it was a natural step for the firm, given the kind of advisory work that it was already doing. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, it recognized that the, the consulting space, right, the transformation kind of like CEO level, um, growth led um, transformation could leverage a lot of the DNA and the toolkits and the depth that a &M has in other areas, which other consulting firms don't. Um, and it did it in a very, you know, in a very smart, thoughtful way, which was 
you know, bringing in um, a set of partners that were recognized in the consumer and retail space and that, you know, had the appetite to, you know, give up, you know, longstanding careers and, you know, leadership positions in other firms to take this on and, um, you know, highly motivated and, and passionate. And, you, you mean, you can't like, that's just, that really, it's really, really important to build something new. Mm-hmm. So, so they were able to get you, right? You're a thought leader and a key advisor in this space. Would I would love to pick your brain here for a second about, well, I, you know, the, the retail industry, it's an interesting place to be right now, right? Underwent heavy disruption during the pandemic. Um, what's your take? What, what does the industry need to do to adapt? Uh, are there any other transformations or things that you see on the horizon over the next couple of years? So the consumer and retail space, right, has many different sectors mm-hmm. as, as part of it, right? So you've got the CPG companies, you've got the retailers, you've got beauty companies. Um, we typically, you know, get a lot of questions about retailers, right, because they are, you know, at the heart of all of the disruption. And we do get a lot of questions around, you know, so what's happening in the pandemic? How did the pandemic cause the disruption? You know, what's going to happen next? And you know, when we all signed up for this, right, no one obviously could have thought that, you know, a few months into standing this up, we would be all going through a pandemic, right? And our clients would, you know, and, and a segment of our clients would likely be one of the most impacted, right? But I think in some ways, right, the, the, that sector had been going, as we all know, a lot of disruption, for the last several years and have been struggling in the last several years. So the pandemic, in a way, gave them a way to rally around certain things that they needed to address and um, expedite some of the changes and do it in a more nimble and agile way that they had been able to do before, right? The circumstances changed so drastically that the way you approach a problem just got flipped on its head, right? And so mm-hmm. we were right there in that moment going through kind of like the same, you know, the same process of like all of a sudden we were building a firm and a practice that it's highly high touch in an environment where all of a sudden we weren't really meeting anyone else in person, right? And so I think we were right there and we helped, you know, we helped these clients, you know, survive over the last, you know, few years and advise them kind of in the next step. So I'm pretty sure I kind of digressed a little bit from your original um, question. Um, But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of transformation coming down the pipeline, some of it that may be a little obvious, some that we cannot predict, even if we, you know, we don't have a crystal ball, but it's like, it's literally, you know, helping people get set up. And I think the pandemic created um, a lot of flexibility um, that others didn't. And I think in some ways, when when this is semi back to normal, we may never have a normal again, right? Some, some companies are going to be really well structured in a much different way than they thought it would have been possible. And so we're going to see a very different landscape, I think. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it, it makes a lot of sense to me from what you said before, uh, kind of bringing that core of Alvarez and Marcel, being able to help out clients in distressed financial positions, to be able to be hands on with a with with a turnaround or a transformation, and now just bringing that into a new space and a new advisory lens uh, that you can still bring that core and the spirit of A and M into this new line of work. Um, so would love to, to build off of that a little bit. Um, you, you talked about kind of this bold expansion, bringing in new outside expertise, yourself included. And it sounds like the, the, the ability to be nimble, that's something that you also mentioned. So how are you, you know, within CRG as a practice, um, how are you staying nimble? How are you acting like a startup while still being able to take advantage of the backing of such a large, well-known organization like a Um, 
Uh, you know, that's, I want to say that's a really good question because it is a really good question. And it's also um, something that I, you know, I think we think about all the time. And I'll explain, a, I'll give you a few examples as to how we are a startup in a bigger firm. But I think one of the things that we also try to make sure that we don't lose is obviously we want to grow and scale, right? And as you grow and you scale, at some point you're no longer a startup, right? And so we don't want to fall into the trap of once you get to that place, you're no longer nimble and agile and as flexible as you used to be. Because the reality is, right, a lot of our clients end up in that situation and we get hired to bring them back to kind of like their original, you know, where it all began and infuse kind of like that, that feeling again. Um, you know, but a couple of examples, right? So again, like I said, we have, you know, you know, big, big A&M has a ton of areas that there's so much depth in um, that we can bring as a toolkit to our clients, right? That we, that we did not have available before at our disposal and in other places, clients will bring in other firms or, or banks or, you know, other advisory um, type of work. And how we can come in and bring that in if they're in that situation. So we can serve them in a little bit more of an end-to-end. -end. Um, and we're, we're plugged in. But in other ways, we, we are building kind of our own thing, right? So, you know, a little plug-in for our newly released website, which was released like two weeks ago or maybe less. You know, we created our own website, right? And so we have, you know, it's... Alvarez and Marcel slash CRG.com. And so, you know, yeah, we created, you know, we created that. We, you know, we have our own recruiting um, engine, right? With Steph um, spearheading it and we go to campus and, you know, we, we, so there's so many ways that we're kind of like, kind of like we have our own, um, you know, our own identity, Right. But we're kind of, you know, we're able to do that because it goes back to the fact that AM in its core, it's very bold. Right. So that is part of how, you know, they were able to grow so fast and so successfully. And it seems like you've been doing quite well at that. It doubled in size roughly over the past 18 months, at least the CRG practice. Uh, what is it that you think has been enabling that growth? Um, okay, so it's a, it's a combination, obviously, uh, it, it's always several factors. Mm. Um, I think one, and I'm not going to say it's, it's an order of priority, right? But I think one of them, and it goes back to the reason why we're here today, it's the people that we recruit and that we bring in, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, we, you know, we started off and we're now 17, 18 partners, right? So obviously, you know, that allows us to bring in, and I can talk a little bit more about that. And yes, we have the AM brand name, but the growth itself, right? Once you get a client to start working with us, the delivery of the work, right? And it, it cannot be done just by you know, the partners, right? So we need, we need a team, right? And we started off with a very lean team and we are, you know, a lot of the growth is attributed to the fact that we now have, you know, people that are working with us and building the practice, right? There's no way we would have been able to deliver some of the work that we delivered without the team that we, that we have. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's definitely a big, a big one. Um, obviously, you know, as, as, you know, we've all been in the industry for a while, right? So our personal brand and reputation, um, precede us. And so, you know, the cl clients, you know, they remember who we were regardless of the firm that we were with, right? And so at some point, you know, people, people come back and, and they reach out and then, yes, there's the A&M, there's the A&M brand name, right? So that, that absolutely helps and, it, and it's a big factor too. Uh, the, the, the kind of people you've been able to attract, the, the fact that they've been looking for opportunities to expand and grow, to be able to build something, uh, the, 
the quite the practice that you've built out over your past couple of years at AM. What would be one highlight of your time with the firm so far? Steph, I'm going to throw something out there, but then I'm going to ask you to comment on it because, you know, we, we work on it together, right? And I think one of the big highlights for us from a recruiting standpoint is or was hiring our first um, set of, you know, MBA class, um, having gone on campus with a, you know, with a brand of CRG that was, you know, non-existent, right? And then onboarding, you know, going through the whole process and then hiring and then onboarding everyone in the middle of a pandemic without having ever met these folks in person and having to, you know, really relearn the model and, you know, stand something up in a very different way than we traditionally had done it in the past. And I think we are super proud of going through that. And we're kind of like in year two now. So we've onboarded a few classes. Steph, it would be great if you could comment on that too. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. That is, um, you know, from a recruiting lens, especially, right? I mean, my job is to meet people in person, you know, to talk about the company, what's great, you know, connect them to our colleagues and, and walk them through the process. And, you know, doing that in this virtual environment, of course, is um, unique. And, and you know, I, I started um, in um, March of last year and I, you know, didn't get to meet my colleagues until May of this year, um, you know, and, and that has all been a really interesting experience. But but to Patricia's point, yes, you know, the recruiting effort, um, you know, talking to these folks, but working with them day to day and onboarding them in a virtual environment um, and still making sure that they have, you know, a, a white glove experience and enjoy, you know, their experience, you know, through the first few weeks of, of being at AM and in our on our team. You know, it's been really important to, you know, to really, you know, focus on that and, uh, you know, in this unique kind of virtual environment, you know, just make sure that we have a high touch um, on our candidates and the recruiting experience. So it's, it's been um, an interesting time for sure. I, I have to say, right, if I put myself in the shoes of the students, how absolutely daunting to have to graduate and take up a job in a place and with a team you've never like met in person right I mean mm -hmm. I remember when I you know when I was hired when I graduated from college like the number of interactions and you know going to the office and you know talking to people and going to dinners and it's just you know, there's definitely like a level of confidence and comfort that you build going through that process. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're trusting a set of people that you've never met before. And then the other thing is also, you know, you're, you're, you're trusting a new business, right? So it's like, I, a huge degree of admiration for the folks that we, we hired during the process. And I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard. Absolutely. But I, I can just imagine what an encouragement it is to the various candidates who are listening to this discussion. Obviously, so many people would love to work for a firm like a and And yet to hear you both say how how concerned you are with their experience, their onboarding, their professional development, you know, their overall experience. Um you know, that you guys are thinking about that, uh, both from a recruiting standpoint and then in the client services leadership aspect as well. Uh, that's got to be an encouragement to those looking to get into the space. Um, Steph, want to keep it going with the, the highlights. Uh, you know, you've been here at, at a and for a bit. What's what's one of your highlights from working with CRG? I mean, obviously, the um, you know, kind of creating this recruiting effort with Patricia um, hand in hand, I think the partnership um, you know, has been hands down one of the best um, experiences of my career. Um, and so, you know, I think it's been just an incredible experience to, you know, to build something again that, you know, didn't exist before for our team, you know, create a process, create an onboarding effort, create, you know, this, this internship program that we just, um, you know, experienced this past summer, our first interns uh, through campus recruiting joined us. And that was incredible 
you know, great um, nine week program for those guys. And, you know, it's just been, it's just been really rewarding, right. To, you know, to see this grow and to partner with Patricia and of course, all of the awesome CRG colleagues that we have and, you know, kind of build a family, you know, on our team. And, and that's really what it is, right. I mean, it's, even in virtual, and, and that's, I think, says a lot to the team. It's even in a virtual environment, you know, we work so closely together to build this that we really are kind of like a, you know, a little family. So it's, it's really great. Um, and it's been, it's been really, um, again, a highlight of my entire career. Steph, would love if you could just talk us through that process, right? Is it is it different than big A and M? Um, you know, I, I take it that with this continued growth, you're continuing to focus on recruiting. Uh, get kind of what are you looking for, and what's that process look like? Yeah, um, well, let's start with the process. So, you know, of course, the process on a from a campus lens is a little bit different than a lateral recruiting or experienced hire um, lens. So, on the campus side, you know, we do have some campuses that we are, um, you know, represented at um, on on campus, um, and so you know, the application efforts, of course, are through those schools. Um, we also have um, an application um, like for lateral or experienced hires um, on our website, so people can apply there. Um, but as it relates to the interview process, you know, for campus, it's again been a little bit different. Um, this year, we are doing um, three interviews um, to offer or, you know, just really condensed into one round. Um, and then for the lateral recruiting effort, you know, I would say, you know, generally, you know, we don't like to have really more than five kind of interviews. I mean, sometimes it does take some time you know, depending on the level of seniority to have those discussions and to get to know candidates, right, and for them to get to know us equally. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's um, a little bit of a unique process. I don't think it's that different, you know, to big a and um, when we think about our experienced hire effort. Um, but again, we do want to create a high touch, um, you know, uh, effort so that, you know, candidates, again, get to know us because it's equally as important, right, for them to, you know, feel like this is the right place for them. Um, and we're the right team for them. It's a good fit for them, too. So, you know, I think it's, it's a very similar process um, in that way. Um, and then in regards to, you know, our candidate qualities, you know, there's a number of things I think that stand out um, to me when we talk about um, our candidates, right? Naturally, you know, there is this part of wanting somebody that has that kind of that self-starter, you know, entrepreneurial kind of mindset, um, you know, somebody that's okay with that because, you know, in a growing team as things evolve, there is some uncertainty. So they have to kind of be excited about that and, and you know, kind of ride the wave of that sometimes. Um, I would say definitely that intellectual curiosity, obviously, you know, how to solve problems, um, navigating, you know, that um, the team player piece is obviously important, um, you know, as we want to focus on our culture and building a team, um, you know, with a great culture that we have and, and continuing to build upon that. Um, technical skills, hands down, you know, the analytical piece, I think, is, is naturally a huge piece of that. Um, what you'll see in our interview processes is that, you know, we do have a split of a case and a behavioral interview. Um, and so, you know, we do test for those technical skills. Um, and, you know, I think otherwise, you know, attention to detail. Some of those, I think those are probably, you know, when I think about high level candidate qualities that, um, you know, that we're looking for, that's what stands out to me. Um, Anything else, Patricia, that I missed? Um, I mean, you covered definitely, you know, ev everything that we, we talk about. I would add a couple more things, which are less, you know, CRG specific, but also in terms of consulting. And if you're looking for a career in consulting, um, and again, if you go to our website, skip that part because I'm going to repeat myself. So... <laughs> what I what I do think it's important, right? So I think if you are going to have a career in consulting, right, one of the things that you have to ultimately be able to do, and you can you can train, you know, over the years, but it's to take really complicated or complex problems and make them simple. Right. And so I think that's really, really important as just kind of like an overall you know, guardrail as we do our job. And then I think the other thing is just from a, a, an attitude and from like, you know, who you are, I think it's, it's important to have a, a mix of being humble and confident at the same time, right? And it's a little bit of like a tricky 
balance, right? But you are coming into an environment, you are being hired, you know, at times to help, many times help someone in an area that they know, they might know a lot more because that's their day-to-day job, right? And and that's okay because you're bringing in a whole set of skills and ways to look at it and that it's different, but you have to, you know, you always have to walk that line between what do I do? What is it that I don't know? Right. And that I can, and, and what is it that I know that I can pretty much, you know, add to this. Right. And, and if you're humble and confident at the same time, it's a lot easier to co-create um, and collaborate with, you know, with that, you know, with that client in that company. And I think, you know, the, you know, not every project is going to feel exactly the same way, but if you think about the evolution of the consulting model, right, and where you ultimately want to be, you know, you really want to be kind of ingrained in that day-to-day and you want to, you know, you want to co-create because the the odds that what you are creating and co-creating is going to stick and make a difference are so much higher than if you are coming in and you're saying, this is my external view with like no impact, not having run this by you, not having gone through the process, which is sometimes it's painful, but it, it makes it better, right? So that's why I go back to like, you've got to have, you know, you've got to have a little bit of both. I love that. Thank you for all those comments. It really reinforces a lot of what we talk about in terms of case preparation, that executive presence and poise and gravitas that you need to bring in the room. This is truly a simulation of that uh, an internal team collaborative nature, which you're going to bring to your target firm, as well as you being an external client advisor, driving to recommendations, layering on insights, being directive, even with limited information, even when you're not the expert in the room. Um, so if if we uh, if we translate those ideas and these skills and qualities that you're looking for back into the recruiting process, Steph, you know what is it that uh, you talked a little bit about expectations for candidates in terms of a behavioral interview and a case interview? Any other insights or tips and tricks here about you know what would be ahead of them in this recruiting process and and your thinking around preparation? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that um, really, truly just getting to know us, you know, as we talk about preparation, you know, it's really important, Um, you know, doing some due diligence, doing some research, um, you know, it it really stands out when candidates know, you know, who they are talking to, not just the person, but obviously our team. Um, As Patricia mentioned, you know, one of the best ways to do that, of course, is our website. Again, we're really super, super excited. Our team has worked uh, long and hard to get this out there. And I think it's, um, they've done a great job you know, we're doing a great job of getting, um, you know, a little bit of ourselves, putting ourselves out there so people know, you know, who are our team members? What are we doing? You know, what are some of the thought leadership, you know, efforts that are out there? Um, you know, of course, LinkedIn is, is a great resource, you know, uh, and I, ask, I tell Candace all the time, you know, let's connect on LinkedIn, you know, happy to answer questions you might have if you have any as you're getting to know us through this process. But I think, you know, just being well-informed and, um, you know, coming into it with, um, you know, that knowledge base, but also showing us and demonstrating, you know, the passion for, you know, either, you know, the business specifically consulting, of course, or consumer and retail industry. I mean, I think those are things that, of course, stand out again in the process. So, you know, as, as you get to know our team, that's, I think, just what's helpful, um, you know, in the recruiting process and in the interview process, just coming, coming, to, the, uh, coming to the table with some knowledge. Absolutely. So you can speak with specificity. Um, in terms of the format of of your process, are they largely one on one interview formats? Do you do you have any digital assessments or a presentation interview or a group interview, anything like that? Um, most of our interviews are really one on one. We, you know, again, as a part of the process, I recommend people doing, you know, kind of coffee chats to getting to know us to, you know, get you to that point. But it's one on one, you know, again, a mixture of that case and behavioral um, effort. We don't really utilize um, digital assessments at this point. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But I mean, I think that, you know, testing out the analytical skills, you know, again, making sure that there's, you know, a fit there um, as well is, is really our, our primary focus. Um, Patricia, uh, any, I, you know, I always want to make sure I'm not missing something. Um, Patricia, anything else to add? 
So I think, you know, we have, you know, we have a lot of partner involvement during the, um, the recruiting process, right? So, you know, you're, you're definitely going to meet with at least one, if not more partners from a purely kind of like interview process, right? I also, I also think you're going to feel, and again, this is something we don't want to lose as we, as we grow, right? So it's the balance, right? You're going to feel like, you know, everyone that's meeting with you, it's not a check in the box, right? You know, I have to do recruiting, you know, I have to do my, you know, my duty and I have to like, it's like, there's a high degree of accountability and ownership over that, you know, that meeting, because they know ultimately, right, that this is bringing someone else into our team. And, you know, if, if you are a senior or a junior person on the team, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know that that person is going to incrementally, you know, advance the, the practice that we're all building, right? So I think, you know, our team goes into the interviews with, you know, a lot of pride for what we were building, but a lot of like ownership of, you know what, I really need to, you know, take this seriously and make sure that I, you know, that I'm conveying who we are and I'm creating an environment to have, you know, the best possible discussion with this candidate. And, you know, that's kind of what I, what I would say, you know, to the candidates also. Um, I mean, I, I don't walk in with an expectation that you have to know us again, because we are not that well known, right? So we just released our website, right? So you can, yes, you know, we offer things throughout the process for you to get to know us, right? It's, to, it's more of a, if I were just giving you advice, right? The more research and getting to know you do beforehand, the more at ease you're going to be in the interview, right? And then the closer to who you actually are on a day-to-day -day you're going to be able to be, right? And an interview process can, again, be a little frightening. I mean, it's a job, right? At the end of the day, it's a job you know, there's an exit risk and everybody wants to do well. So you can, you can get a job and then you can decide if you're going to take that offer or not. Right. That's why I don't go into the process thinking I have to be someone's top priority. I go into the process thinking we have to make sure that we're a good match. And then I have to convince this person that if we are a good match, they should pick me if they have other choices. Right. Um, but then I think for the candidate coming into the interview, just have fun, you know, enjoy yourself because yes, it's a, like you said, Stephanie, it's a mi mini simulation, right? Of what you're going to encounter on a day to day, right? The case mm -hmm. is just, a, a, you know, we're just simulating what it's going to feel like when you're a client and you get, you know, you get asked to do something or you have a project or a task, right? And you have to have fun through that process, right? You have to be curious and you have to be like, you know what, I really, you know, in those 10, 15 minutes that I have, I can walk out with an answer that I didn't have before just because I'm going through this process. And, and you should use us as like, you know, somebody to talk through and co-create through that process, right? And use the interview. Yes, you want to show your best self, but you also want to understand who you're, who you're talking to, right? And so, again, it's a two-way and that seems like pretty obvious, um, but it, it, it really, it really is. I, no, I love that you guys are expanding on this. You know, many times it gets boiled down to industry research and networking, but to actually hear from you both, how you want candidates to really learn about who you are, not just big A&M, but your practice and the people within it, the type of work that you do, that can, a, a good well-prepared candidates will come into any conversation, you know, ready and armed with questions to ask. At the end of each interview, they'll have good uh, questions to ask because it is this two-way conversation. And so hopefully everybody listening here today, this really starts to kind of bring this into focus, focus and make more sense of, uh, of, of these types of activities. It, it really does matter whether or not there's an official referral process or not. Uh, you got to do your legwork. You got to get to know people within the, you know, the area of the business that you're applying into. 
Well, with that, Steph, I'm sure we have a lot of people at this point in time from a recruiting angle who are interested in continuing to explore CRG, consider recruitment opportunities. What are some of their best next steps moving forward? Absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned, you know, we have, um, you know, it's outside of the core school, but outside of the campus recruiting efforts, um, we have um, an application um, open on our website, so candidates can apply there. Obviously, the job description, um, you know, speaks to some of the things that we've discussed today, what, what we're doing, what we're looking for, um, you know, what they will you know, be a part of. Um, so, the application through our website, I think, is, is probably the best uh, next step. Um, and then, of course, you know, happy for anyone to reach out to follow up to, uh, to follow up, excuse me, with me via email or via LinkedIn um, and and go from there. Fantastic. Patricia, I'll turn it over to you first. Any kind of final comments or additional thoughts uh, for this candidate group interested in CRG? I mean, listen, I I would make this a little bit bigger than and then CRG. Right. Um, and I will go back again to, um, you know, my earlier comments around, you know, going through a recruiting process and, you know, getting, you know, getting to a job and, um, you know, there are a number of elements, right? You know, is, is consulting for you? Is this the right place for you? Um, and I think you should, you know, you should be very thoughtful and very, very strategic about this process in the same way that, you know, when you're at school, you're doing this, it's kind of like a, you know, it's, it's a whole project, right? Of, you know, finding a job and interviewing. And it's, you have to also, in, you know, enjoy, enjoy the process. And, you know, once you get a job and, you know, you, you get started, you know, maybe it's not for you, and maybe it's the place you're gonna find yourself 20 years later, you know, like like I am sitting here. Um, and I think it's okay, it's okay either way. I just think that in consulting, and that's a little pitch like for a plug for consulting in general, I don't think you can go wrong, right? Even if it's not the job you wanna be doing for the next 20 years like I am, there's no downside to doing it for a few years you know, as many years as you, you think you want to do this, there's literally no downside. It is such a high, like intense learning experience and it's, it's fun. And it is, you're exposed to so many different, you know, clients and organizations and ways of doing things and behavior. It's like, it's, you know, it is like an, a whole education, not just on like problem solving or, you know, helping, you know, how do you recommend or build a PowerPoint page? It's like, I really think it's like a lot of life lessons because it's like everything is so intense and you have access to so much stuff, even in days like today where everything is on, it, it's virtual and on Zoom. Um, so I would say, you know, I highly recommend this career, even if it's not forever. And I say, you know, enjoy the process and, you know, enjoy, enjoy the career while you're, while you're doing it. And for CRG, yes, get to know us. You know, we are, we're new, um, but us, you know, the partners and we have been around for, for decades. Um, so we do know what we're doing and we do know this, this job really well. And um, we all, you know, when we signed up for this, we signed up for, you know, more work, um, you know, starting from scratch at times. So there's a high degree of motivation and passion um, and energy in the air that I would say, you know, that you're not going to find everywhere. Absolutely. No, I love I love it. I love that plug. That That's great. And, and for the industry and job overall. Uh, Steph, anything you want to add on to that? No, I mean, I think Patricia said it beautifully um, and, and exactly, you know, what I would want to hear as a candidate, which is, you know, have fun, be authentic, enjoy the process, um, you know, get to know who you're meeting, um, you know, but just, I think, come as you are, be yourself, you know, and it is a daunting process, um, but, you know, 
doing those things that we mentioned, um, you know, having follow up, but enjoying, you know, what you're doing too is so important. Um, so I'm excited to, you know, to talk to candidates um, and looking forward to getting to know others that, you know, meet us through this. And um, I think that really, I think that's it. Thanks. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you again for joining us for this conversation. Um, and you can find a link in the show notes for extra follow-up uh, information. Thank you.